Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, um, we've been asked to um, participate in this inspirational campaign to get every human being on planet Earth that gets a chance to view this to um, <clears throat> have some more hope and faith in themselves and get rid of the isms, sex isms, age isms, prejudism, get rid of it all and move forward with positivity and know that success is always your best revenge on anybody that's trying to keep you down and there will be people trying to keep you down it's just unfortunately a part of our playing field as, as human beings but keep fighting and I wanted to you know introduce Elisa who's my wife I'm fortunate enough to have her helping me as well on this mission and she loves me very much and I appreciate her very much so it's it's time for her to give her um, take on some of the things you've overcome in life because you've been through a lot and uh, you've survived and so share with them how did you do this and what were some of the psychological skills you needed to make it happen okay well <clears throat> growing up in the Midwest especially a, a child of a white father and a black mother wasn't really easy for me um, I experienced a lot of racism both from the black kids and the white kids got beat up in school every day my sister who's 13 months apart from me was always at my rescue beating them up or pulling them off of me or something but when you're growing up in a household where you look totally different from everyone else and then you're told by the very person you're told and you're hurt by the very person who's supposed to uh, protect you and be there for you and encourage you your own mother uh, per se it kind of makes it a little more difficult there were times it, during my childhood where I would ask God just to kill me because not only was I suffering abuse from the from the kids the black the whites but I was also you know suffering from abuse from my mom so I would always be asked take me from this earth take me from this earth I was alone I felt alone other than my sisters and brothers who kind of made fun of me as well mm -hmm. um, my hair was different, my eye color was different, my skin color was different, and people judged me based on that. And as I got older, you know, I was think, okay, it's going to be different, you know, it's going to be different. But it really wasn't too much different, because now that I've moved along, moved away from the racism and the, the child abuse that I experienced, I was put into another category of abuse from men. Um, a lot of women are abused by men, some so so severe that they've lost their life because you know they've made them feel like nobody will want them but them or you're not good enough or or they, they become controlling and possessive I don't want you wearing that makeup I don't want you wearing those clothes and then you get abused verbally in the, in the beginning and then physically uh, towards the end and middle of the relationship which almost took my life so I just I want to tell people that when there are jealousies, obviously, if, if people are putting you down or, or talking about you or making you feel bad in some way, you have something that they want, obviously. They're resentful. They're jealous. Um, they can become cruel with your words, the thoughts. Words and thoughts are very powerful. Um, I learned that from Marcus. I used to have very bad thoughts. Well, you know, I hope this person gets it, you know, for doing me wrong or saying something wrong. And I'd, I'd actually start projecting things to happen to them. Things would happen, actually. You know, so thoughts are very powerful. But then I wouldn't feel good as a person inside. I felt bad. So I, I started to work on me. Like he said, success is the best revenge. I started to work on me. Uh, when I met him, I was at a low part in my life where I was angry. I was always wanting to fight. I didn't like myself. I didn't like others. You know, he kind of made me his project. I told him, make me your project. You know, he started working on me. And it hasn't been easy for either one of us. He started working on me. I've changed compared to the person that I was years ago, a few months ago. Um, you know, I started working on me. 
wanted to be a better person for me, to show all these people, hey, you know, you told me I'd never be anything. You know, you used to abuse me and, and make me feel bad and make me feel less than. Well, look at me now, you know, sort of thing. I'm, 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 I'm growing. I've changed. I've become this better human being, both inside and out. And I've discovered that even though you're become, you become a better human being for yourself, for the people around you, and eventually for other people to maybe, you know, become inspired or motivated by you, there are still people that not try to knock you down, try to make you feel less dead. But the key to the key to survival, as he said, that you have to do, that you have to uh, embrace is, you know, forget about what they're saying. You know who you are. They haven't walked in your shoes. They don't know what you've gone through. But you've gone through so much that something in you have changed to make you the person that you are today. The person I am today, which I'm not perfect. I still have a lot of work to do on myself. But the fact of the matter that I want to. I don't want to sit in this misery and, oh, I'm not anything or I can't do anything because I can and I have. I have conquered so many obstacles in my life, mm -hmm. unbelievable things that by by all rights, I should either be on drugs, or in prostitution, or in jail, or even dead. But I beat those odds, uh, those statistics. Um, I'm not normal. I don't consider myself a normal person in society's eyes, but society would expect you to be normal. I think society's definition of normal is actually pretty messed up. So, you know, I, uh, I just continue to work on me, be a better person on me, a person for me and for the people around me. Um, you know, I still am attacked frequently for anything. I mean, I've just been attacked recently. <laughs> but, um, you know, I wish those people well, wish them love, and stay as far away from them as, I, as far away from them as possible as I, mm -hmm. as I possibly can and just continue to work on me and be better. My passion right now is to inspire other people, to motivate other people, to say, yes, you can't. There is no can't in a vocabulary because if you believe you can't, then you, you most definitely won't. Um, but if you continue to say, I can do this, I'm love, I'm a goddess, I'm, I'm, I'm here for people, I wanna help people, you know, I'm love, I'm light. You know, incantations that you say to yourself, you believe those things and then, once you believe those things, there's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't achieve. You know, I achieved the impossible when I married this man here. It was the impossible. You know, just by being a kind, loving human, be uh, human being to him, taking care of him, running after him, I love him to life. You know, she does. and um, he saw that. You know, he didn't look at, you know, a lot of men would say, would want a, somebody that's cover girl, hot. Whatever. I wasn't those things. You're hot, baby. You know? You know you're hot. <laughs> I wasn't those things, but what I didn't have in that category, I brought in a different way from the inside. And he recognized that. So nothing is impossible. Nothing. You know, I know that now. Nothing is because like I said, this was impossible. That I thought in my mind. But as long as you show up to be who you truly are inside, be true to yourself, be true to other people, you know, you get back with what you put out, you know, so to speak. So I would just say, keep bettering yourself. You know, make those people say, those people that put you down, ridiculed you, judged you, condemned you, you know, you won't be able to reach them all, but even if you were to reach a few, you know, that would help. Me, personally, I feel I don't have anything to prove to anybody but myself and God. As long as I'm doing that, I feel like I'm doing something right and everything else will fall into place. That was good. Very yeah. good. And you know what I would like to say on a, on a finishing note for, for this, because it felt it came through to me, was um, you will get people talking about you in a negative way. You will experience slander. As she said, we, we were just experiencing it just yesterday. Um, but the difference as to what you can do if you want to be successful with that energy, because when someone sends you that negative energy inside of you, there naturally is this burning. Like It's a burning kind of energy of either hurt or retaliation. 
Some people want to go under a bush and cry because they just feel so much pain inside. They just want to, you know, crawl under a rock. And some people want to fight back. I'm naturally a fight back type. But what I learned, and this is a number one thing I would say has helped my life and it can help your life and definitely is helping your life too, is if you take that energy and you go and put that fire that you have for those people who are attacking you into what it is you do, whether it be your singing, your career, your acting, your business. For us, we're running right now, we're doing athletics. You put that energy where it belongs into positivity and don't send the fire back. Usually, the person who's attacking you, they get bored, they, they're gonna go look for somebody else. It's an issue that is existing in them. Don't re-engage in them because then you get into what is typical gang warfare. They shoot you, you shoot them, they shoot It's the same thing we see in South Central LA. That doesn't, you know, benefit anybody. Take the energy of negativity that someone sends your way, acknowledge it, acknowledge that it hurts or acknowledge that it made you angry and, and, and see energy for what it is and use that energy back into your passion. Success is the best revenge, so use every piece of fuel you get. Doesn't matter if someone says, you know what, I know you're gonna do it. You, you do you do great, I love you. Or if someone says, you know what, you're a loser, you're never gonna make it, I hate you. Take both of those energies and mm -hmm. turn it into good. You have to perform alchemy on the dark stuff. You gotta turn lead into gold, and that's the key. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then you will have success, and the naysayers, they fueled you just as much as the people who were supporting you. I used to be one of those people. Revenge. Oh, really? Oh, you want to do that to me? But, um, but you then know, you'll end up in trouble. You'll end up in trouble. Even worse, you'll probably end up in debt because I was going down that, that path mm. of destruction. Um, but, you know, you he's right. You just turn that into success. Nowadays, when I get upset about something, I'll take that anger and, and, and that, that, that heated fuel that I have and I'll pour it into the trap. Because I run mm -hmm. track, or I'll put it into the weights, or, you know, I've learned to do that instead of seeking out people to hurt, you know, so, <laughs> but, you know, and it does make it, I feel a lot better. I do, I feel a lot better as a human being, being able to do, focus that energy into something positive for me, mm -hmm. instead of giving them the pleasure that they want to fight back, so. Okay.